Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The concept that we need to enhance our self-esteem is foreign to the Word of God. But does that mean that God wants us to beat up on ourselves? Absolutely not. Self-belittlement is no better than self-esteem. The result is the same. That is a focus on self. God doesn't want us to feel bad about ourselves any more than He wants us to feel good about ourselves. He wants us to be finished with ourselves. His way of dealing with self is neither self-improvement nor self-flagellation. It is to be delivered from self. And the gospel deals with the problem of self or the flesh. When we come to the cross, we see not only our sins laid upon Christ, but ourselves also crucified with him. In exchange, we have been given Christ's life. Christ lives in us now. And as we walk by faith in the Son of God, we experience this life. What incredible freedom that is. We have nothing to prove to anyone anymore. We can no longer come under scrutiny or condemnation any more than a dead man can be prosecuted. As Paul said, the things that we did once boast in, we boast in no longer. We count them all as loss for the excellence of Christ. He is our life and it is in Him that we now boast. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And thank you for joining us as we continue our conversation about walking in the Spirit. Now, yesterday, we looked at the fact that every Christian experiences that daily conflict of the flesh warring against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. Now, Ken, you made a statement that uh, every Christian is a walking civil war. I like that kind of a picture. Mm. Let's talk a bit more about that. Yeah, there's a very important point I want to share, Phil. It helped me when I discovered it, and I'm sure it'll help our listeners today. Now, you know, when we were redeemed, we were made perfect in our spirits. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you ever you remember reading 1 John chapter 3, where John says, whoever has been born of God does not sin. Uh, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Mm -hmm. If you remember reading it, well, if you're like me, probably you reacted to that first of all by feeling condemned. Well, I don't know, I I sin, you know, I'm not perfect. Or yeah, right. Uh, Yeah, Yeah. so, or resolve, yeah, well, I'm definitely not going to sin anymore, you know, after reading that. And then do it within 10 minutes, maybe? Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, we're not going to go on to become sinlessly perfect. That's not what John was saying. The thing is this, when you read what he's saying there, Phil, he didn't say that you should not sin, uh, but that we don't and we can't. So he's actually referring to our spirits. Paul says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Christ. Now, our spirits are joined to Christ, so our spirits can no more sin and be corrupted than Christ himself can. It's a bit hard to get your head around, though, because we do sin. So yeah. what's going on? Okay, well, there's one part of us that's not yet redeemed, and that's our bodies. And the Bible says that sin dwells in our members, that is, the members of our body. So you ask what's going on, and in fact, that's what Paul asked in Romans chapter 7. You know, he says as a new creation, he wanted to do that which was right, but found himself doing what was wrong. And mm-hmm. he didn't want to do what was wrong, but couldn't help it. You know, he just found himself automatically doing that. Yeah. And, and he said exactly what you said. He says, what I'm doing, I don't understand what's going on. You know, explain. Um, but then he says this. He comes to the realization. He says, it's no longer I who does it, but sin Who dwells in me? That's in the members of his body. In fact, let me read to you what he says in uh, chapter 7. Let's just look at his actual words. He says, um, now, if I do what I will not to do, he says, it's no longer I who do it, but it's sin that dwells in me. Then he goes on to say in verse 22, for I, that's me, that's who I really am, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. That's my spirit. But, he says, I see another law where in the members, that's the members of my body, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So this is this civil war that we're talking about going on. But isn't it be fair to say that it's a bit of a cop-out though, Ken? I mean, it's like you're saying, oh, well, the devil made me do it. Yeah, yeah, it can be like that. It wasn't really me. It was sin dwelling in my members. No, we can't do that because um, when we understand what Paul is teaching about the whole subject of salvation, we know that He teaches that, you know, like from three tenses, past, present, and future. So the past is that we've been justified. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that um, we've been forgiven all our sins, and and even when we sin now, sin is not imputed to us. Why? Because all our sin has already been imputed to Christ. So what's imputed to us now? 
is righteousness. That's why, you know, we, 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 in our spirit, we cannot sin. Mm. We are a new creation. We're perfect in Christ. Okay, now, the present tense aspect of our salvation is what we call sanctification. Now, we've been set apart from the power of sin so that we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and we've been given God's grace, which is his ability in the place of our inability. Yeah. So that means we can rise above temptation. We can say no to sin. And then, of course, there's the, the future aspect of our salvation, which is called glorification, which means that one day we'll even be delivered from temptation. We'll be delivered from the presence of sin forever. We'll never have to go through this again. When it comes back to your question, can we just use our position to say, oh, well, I'm already perfect in Christ, so really it's not me that's sinning, it's, it's sin that's in my members, uh, so it's, I can't help it. You know, it's not me, it's not my fault. Can we use that as, as an excuse? No, because the Bible says that in this uh, present tense aspect of our salvation, sin will not have dominion over you. Where sin abounds, God's grace abounds much more. We've actually got a choice in this. We can say no to sin. Yes to righteousness. Mm. Okay, let's give some practical legs on that. What does it actually mean to walk in the Spirit? Okay, well, the New Testament teaches us then to yield the members of our bodies to God as instruments of righteousness. It says it three times, for example, in in Romans chapter 6. Now, let me give an illustration then. One of the members of my body is my tongue, okay? Each day I've got a choice. I can use this tongue to serve sin or to serve God. Don't you poke it out at me again. (laughs) I can use it to slander people. Yep. I can use it to tell lies, to use coarse language, uh, to bring others down in condemnation and so on. Or I can use it, as I'm doing now, to to speak the word of God. I can use it to proclaim the gospel, to edify Mm. fellow believers, to encourage the faint-hearted, to to give godly counsel and so on. Amazing how much power there is in that one little... Member, member that is what there. potential for good Huge. or for evil. So when I choose to make my tongue available as an instrument of righteousness, I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. When Paul says walk in the Spirit, there's the Spirit of God. We said yesterday he's uh, warring against the flesh. He's saying don't go there. Don't make that choice. Yeah. Don't choose sin. Choose righteousness. Offer the members of your body as an instrument of righteousness. So the Holy Spirit is working in us to produce that kind of life. But the choice is still ours. Love those T-shirts from back in the eighties that had "Choose Life." Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The same thing. You got to choose righteousness. Yeah, and you know you've rightly pointed it out. It is our choice. Yeah, it's like um, you and I will understand this very well. Being men, Phil, we understand this. Watching the TV, we of course have control of the remote control. That's, that's our it. domain. And you're not getting that's, that off me. I mean, that's nobody needs to explain <laughs> that. That's that's every everybody understands that. Now, okay, I'm sitting there with the remote control in my hand. I can I can watch a number of channels, but it's me that makes the choice what I will watch. Now, what is the determining factor that will decide whether we will walk according to the Spirit? or according to the flesh? Various answers, as you know, Phil, have been given to that question, such as fasting, long sessions of prayer and Bible study, yep. crisis experience on all the course, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, the answer is much simpler than these methods. The crucial factor that will determine whether we will walk in the Spirit or according to the flesh is just 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds of what and when? Okay, let me explain. All our training for life prior to our salvation has been in the flesh. So throughout all the years of our lives, until we were born again, including those formative years, we've set our minds on the things of the flesh and have learned to respond to the challenges of life with the resources of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, these patterns have been structured in us so as to become fairly automatic to us. It's the way we react, you know, automatically. So to walk according to the flesh is our habitual response to life. But now we're a new creation and the Holy Spirit is at work in us, warring against the sinful leading of the flesh. And only 10 seconds is all he needs to reveal to us an alternative way. And that is Christ's way of responding to each situation. So when you're about to say yes to the flesh, will you give him 10 seconds to show you an alternative way, which is the way of godliness? Helpful advice on walking in the Spirit this week, and we continue our conversation same time tomorrow. Do join us. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies, and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 